Welcome to Go Live TV, the future in your hands. The only multicultural IPTV station that brings communities together. Over 2.7 million people have already watched Go Live TV anytime, anywhere. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to History Makers TV. I'm your host, Derek Schneider. I'm so glad to be with you today. We have had some really powerful, powerful episodes on History Makers TV. We just want to thank you for watching from all over the world, the comments you, you give, and even on our YouTube channel. If you're watching from our YouTube channel, make sure you click like and subscribe. I'm really excited for today's broadcast because we're going to be talking about what has been called one of the most transformative trainings of the 21st century. And that's no preacher exaggeration. We are seeing something emerge in the world today through training and equipping that is phenomenal. If you're not aware of what is a component of or one of the greatest aspects of the reformation of the church in these days, it's the training and equipping and sending factor, equipping average believers that are coming and sitting within the church each week and sending them out into their place of influence and calling. We know that that's the message of the hour, the transformation of society, discipling nations, not, ministry not just happening from the stage, from the pastor, but the people in the church pews being equipped, their calling, their God-given calling being pulled out of them, and being sent beyond the four walls into society. And so we want to hone in on our History Makers Experience training a little bit today, if you don't know what that is. We actually have one, three-day training, coming up October 28th to 30th. You can register and get more information at historymakersacademy.com. And I'm really excited to have my good friend, one of my foremost disciples, one of the foremost disciples of Jesus, may I say, and Philip Isaacs is here with us today, and he's actually going to be interviewing me. We're going to have a discussion on this new phenomenon that God is raising up that's making such impact in the nations of the world today. I'm really excited oh, that you're here, Philip. And you were on uh, a couple months ago, I think. Yeah, what, yeah, did you, right. what did you speak about? Because I, oh. I heard good things about I, it. I mainly spoke on our original purpose and function or the original design as according to God, the way God's created it. How when he says the kingdom of God is within you, how that works at a very biological DNA level. Wow, the message of the kingdom, yeah, that's right. which is the message of the hour. Even yeah. just hearing you say that, I want to get into the the king's domain, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to preach today. But we're, ha we're having a half-hour show uh, today, so let's dive right into it. Philip, what, what have you got for me? Oh, I got, You've I got come some, prepared. I have, I have. So if you see me look at my phone, I, I, hey, listen, we're, we got some heavy hitter questions here. All right. So history maker's experience. First off, uh, we're going to hear this a lot. What is the history maker's experience? What is the history maker's experience? Mm -hmm. You know, one of the ways we've endeavored to describe it because you want to call it just a training or something. And when people think of a training, they think of the conference they went to or a training that their work held or maybe a series of, of lectures and sermons all crammed into, into one day or two days. But actually, the History Makers experience, we actually have called it an experience because it's more than a training. And we didn't know what to call it. Uh, some people have called it a destiny doorway because of the impact that it has on people as they go through this, this intensive training. One way we like to describe it 
is a specially choreographed, spirit-filled environment designed to rewire you or anyone for high-performance Christianity. <laughs> wow, high-performance Christianity, that's... Yeah. That, that's yeah. intense. High performance Christianity or effective Christianity. But more than that, it's a spiritual concentrated environment over three days that, that forces you to kind of come to the end of your own abilities where you have to tap into divine power. You have to tap into God's power to even get through this training. And so we're teaching people what can take years on the mission field that, that leaders have to learn through hardship and reliance on God and how can I face this situation? You know, Lord, your grace is, is, is uh, perfect for me. You know, uh, that kind of a concept, your grace is sufficient. That's what we endeavor to create all in three days, which is why we see people come out of that training doing exploits, doors opening, effective ministry, effective in their personal lives and disciplines, it is the ultimate result-oriented machine. <laughs> that sounds incredible. I, I know I know when I took it, and we'll get into another time, but when I took it, that happened with me. So well, one of the things I wanted to know, you totally talked on results. What kind of results have you seen people go get after taking, after being through this type of experience? You know, when we talk about results in the Christian world, uh, a little bit of a better word that's more user-friendly is the term fruitfulness. Uh, you get a lot of debating around as Christians results or productivity or it sounds sort of secular in their minds. But the kingdom of God actually demands that you bear fruit. The Bible talks about the kingdom will be taken from this one and given to another that bears right. the fruit thereof. Right. And so God has actually called us to do more than coming and sitting in church, as, mm -hmm. as important as that is. Mm -hmm. God has actually called us to fruitfulness, and each individual person has their own uh, calling where they can be fruitful in. If you take the Garden of Eden, for example, and you look at Adam and Eve being placed in the garden, told to manage and work the garden, Adam and Eve, right from the beginning, the necessity of fruitfulness was there. And so in the same way, every person in life actually has a garden, their own garden that God has placed them in and wants them to produce something from to glorify his kingdom. Every person, whether it's being a teacher or working at Walmart, you're a university student, it's important to analyze what your garden is. And the three-day history makers experience does far more than help you identify your garden. We actually give you tools and equipping to be effective, but beyond that, we teach you how to break through that barrier of doing ministry in your own strength. We have lots of labor going on in the world for the kingdom. We, we're building right. churches. We're trying to build ministries. We want to touch our nations. We want right. to influence the seven mountains, and we've got enough ministers doing ministry in their own strength. But there are those who God uses to do, to do extraordinary exploits in the world because they have tapped into his power. They function in ministry from his power rather than their own. And so the question becomes, how, do, how does somebody make the shift from ministering in their own strength to tapping into his strength? Because a lot of people would say, well, I pray every day. I always say, Lord, use me. Aren't I functioning from his strength? The reality yeah. is we lean on a lot of stuff today, <laughs> Wow! especially in our churches, a lot of gimmicks, a lot of stuff, a lack of firsthand revelation that that person discovered in prayer. We're using everything we can to get ahead in ministry, but there's a place you can get to that Apostle Paul alluded to when he said, uh, I, I had a thorn in my side, a messenger of Satan sent to buffet me, and I prayed that the Lord would remove. He said he prayed three times that the Lord would remove it, yet he didn't, and he said, my grace is sufficient for you. For power, divine power, divine power, <laughs> for power is perfected in weakness. Right. The key is weakness, and this is one of the secrets 
and the components within the training of what we cultiva cultivate within a student over the period of those three days. How do I come to the end of my own abilities and tap into his and then demonstrate it right there on site? Yeah. I, I'm sorry, wow. this might be too much for incredible. our viewers today. No, you know what? I want to take this training all over again. <laughs> 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 it, it, it's definitely, it, it's, the, it's the kingdom, right? It's, it's, it's refreshing, it's relevant all the time. That's the thing about the kingdom, it's always relevant. Now you mentioned something I want to kind of, yeah, it's a question I know others have out there. Mm -hmm. If I'm new, you know, I'm, I'm just seeing this for the first time. Maybe I'm seeing it through this, this live here. Maybe I'm seeing it through ads. Do I have to be a specific type of person to take this experience, mm -hmm. to have this experience? Do I have to be like a super go-getter, a pastor? Um, do I have to be a business person? Or, or can I just be somebody who may not know much? Is this for everybody or is this for maybe a very few? What would you say? This is such a great question. And I have to go back to Jesus because Jesus' model of equipping people in their calling and purpose, and he did it with 12 people, so much so, you know, the effects of the kingdom were so systemic throughout generations through these 12 people. You and I are sitting here today. Right. Uh, however... Jesus didn't train and equip people to disciple nations by preaching to them two hours once a week on a Sunday in a building. As good as that is, as important as that is, he chose a different model. The Jesus model of training was time spent, uh, not one-way traffic, but discussion, challenging them. I always say that and I've said this, you know, in, in churches before that most of you are comfortable going to church, but very few of you would be comfortable following Jesus. Wow. Because Jesus will, he will correct you sitting around the fire. He will ask you to get out of the boat and walk on water. He will challenge you to do things in, in your sphere, whatever that is. And so if you ask me, who is it for? Jesus went to the most unqualified, barely believers, almost rejected by society. He went to the lowest, the tax collectors, the, right, the fishermen. Right. He went to the lowest because the kingdom of God works in anybody mm. if it's implanted in them and infused in them in a certain way. I used to think, why wouldn't Jesus go and call 12 Pharisees? They're already experts in the law. Right. They already have uh, Bible college. <laughs> right, right. And so why wouldn't Jesus call those guys and just add a little bit of the hot sauce? No, Jesus went to those who had nothing, who had nothing to prove, who, who knew very little, and he showed up and showed off in them. And the kingdom of God was placed in them in such a way they turned the world upside down, the truth is. So the history maker's experience is a similar kind of training environment. So it's meant for the new believer. We've had unbelievers go through it. And, and of course, it's kingdom-based, Christian-based. Right. Right. Uh, it's meant for the person that's been sitting in church for 20 years, but not bearing any fruit other right. than faithfully attending church each Sunday. It seems to be a training that meets a person where they're at and, and thrusts them into the potential that's been sitting there all along. It does in three days what could take 30 years of Sunday morning attendance. Wow. If ever. Wow. <laughs> and, and I'm guessing you've seen this. Can you provide any type of examples, just for those who are watching, you know, is somebody stick out to you that really maybe felt they were super unqualified or maybe just sat in the pew for 20, 30 years and, and then all of a sudden they, they have this experience, they go through the three-day three, three day training, three-day experience, and they come out and it's all of a sudden they're a completely different person. Can, can you speak to any of those type of examples? You know, we have hundreds of these stories now, as you know, in, in different demographics, different nations, because it also has become quite a tool in the rebuilding of developing nations or... Uh, helping to spearhead transformation. But l let me focus in on a North American context, for example. I think of an achiever. Let's start with an achiever, somebody like Aisha Francis, who attended church for years, had a prophecy over her life that she would develop something. She was going to do something to impact families. 
And she comes through the training, and in our system building sessions, <laughs> can you imagine? System building, being taught in church. Uh, system building sessions, she gets this idea from God on creating a curriculum and a program, a system that would work to rehabilitate families impacted by incarceration, meaning one person, one of the husband or wife is in and out of prison and fragments the family and traumatizes the family. She went on to finish this curriculum, this system, this program. She got it registered as a legitimate charitable organization. That's the key to occupying territory out where they are. And she began to help to re restore, rehabilitate families where the husband had been in prison or something. She had experienced this herself, but she didn't know how to put it together. The training gave her the tools and the grace to do it. That program went on to really put her on the world stage. Um, she became a speaker at all kinds of things. Uh, the local university was sending students to intern with her. The um, local university was sending Oh, yeah. That. Oh, yeah. This was, she, she literally made history. Now, that's an achiever. Right, right. Let's look at somebody like Patrick Flontek. And I love this story because I knew him for a number of years. Older man, even had a lot of health challenges. And he, he registered for this training. And, and he had sat in church for, I think, over 25 years. He had never led a single person to Christ. And he comes through this training. He gets on fire for God. He takes the principle of honor thy father and thy mother. And he says, how can we get a society to honor their fathers and mothers, to honor their seniors? So he creates a program called Budding with Seniors that ministers to senior citizens. He goes on to help to lead and oversee two seniors' church plants that are in senior centers. And he said at our national conference, he said, Pastor, I'm leading people to Christ on almost a weekly basis. Wow. Many weekly. of them before they died. This is somebody who was doing, look, let me, let me just be real with you, okay? He was attending church but doing nothing for the kingdom. No fruit other than, and, and it's a worthy fruit to, to live your life of faith and, and, and all that. And he was growing in God, but was missing the apostolic equipping factor. Can I give you just one more? Please, Let, please Let's do. go yeah. right to somebody who was borderline illiterate. And I've been told by some, some people, Pastor, you shouldn't share this story because it's too hard to believe. <laughs> and people right. are going to think you're being dramatic. And, right. But you know what? I'm going to share it anyways. Please, but please share it, yes. This man came from the First, Na a First Nations Reserve somewhere in Ontario, and he's taking the training, and I was told by our coordinator that this guy can't read or write. A and there's assignments and things we do that are woven throughout the training you have to read a book. We used to make it, you had to read a book a day or a book in three days and right. teach you how to speed read and take in and process right, information. Right. And, and we're thinking, how is this guy going to do it? To our shock, and I, I have to be honest, I really didn't believe it when our coordinator told me because they mark the assignments. We actually have a team that tracks your growth throughout the training. Uh, she said, he's handing in handwritten assignments. He's telling us he's reading. Wow. And when we dug a little deeper into this, he was borderline illiterate. Wow. Can't read or write very well at all. You know, I, I right. even was given a greater testimony, but right. I'm trying to dumb it down a bit. He began to read and write in the training. And, and I'll tell you why. Because within that training, we cultivate the environment of as it is in heaven. Okay. And if he was in heaven, <laughs> he can read and he can write. Yeah, and the yeah. Jesus in him yes. can read and can write. Wow. And so as it is in heaven, I'm getting too excited here, but as it is in heaven was visiting him in mm -hmm. those three days in mm -hmm. that heavenly environment. He began to read and write. He, we watched his growth. He began to score excellent. And I said, come on, guys, are you... Are you being lenient on him and your marking? And they said, 
No, pastor, this is a miracle. Praise God for that. Now, the real miracle is after he left the training. Right. You know, we leave a lot of conferences inspired. Mm -hmm. We leave some services, Mr. Hallelujah, Mrs. Amen, mm -hmm. and not much changes sometimes mm -hmm. when we go home. Right. He went on to start a church wow. within his reserve, and he got involved. I don't know how their politics work works, right. but he got involved on some level of political influence when he went back. Wow. And we have stories like this one after another. And that's why our biggest issue with the academy is we don't believe you. But then we, this is why we endeavored to put videos up. We have right. the testimonies on the website because right. we're saying, look, this is working. Now it's been a number of years and we've collected a lot of testimonies right. of whole nations being impacted. Right, right. Standing in the office of the the president in, in Namibia, first mm -hmm. lady's office, mm -hmm. training their leaders, uh, Bulgaria, speaking before the judges and lawyers mm -hmm. convention and putting up graduates of this training up onto the stage to testify of how they're impacting society. And when you see them one after another, the light bulb goes on for believers and non-believers mm -hmm. that, whoa, it's the church's role right. to rebuild nations. Right. It's right. the church's role to disciple nations. Yeah. It's the church's role to institute values in the educational sphere. It's the church's role to produce innovative products and business ideas. The church right. can be a catalyst of the transformation of their nations. Wow. But we haven't been equipping them. Mm. We've been laboring to build churches. And the pastor feels good right. every Sunday morning. Well, heaven's resource is sitting right there in those chairs, mm -hmm. week after week, playing churchianity. Wow. 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 That's something. That's something. <laughs> the, it, you know what? Um, there's so many trainings out there that we see. And you, you touched on a bit, conferences here, you get the yes and amens, and then they go back and not much change. What makes this one different? Well, other than what I laid out yeah, already, right? Um, we leverage three factors, which Harvard discovered as, they call them the three factors of success. I like to call them the three factors of fruitfulness. Okay. But the three of them, and, and, and don't tune out right now, guys. If I give you a couple numbers here, stay with me because this is profound. Mm -hmm. The three factors of success they discovered are knowledge, environment, and character. Mm, okay. Okay? Knowledge, environment, and character. Now, when I say knowledge... Knowledge, uh, the kind of knowledge I'm talking about is knowledge you pay a price for. Mm -hmm. Expertise in right. your field of calling. Right. Okay? But they say that that knowledge, the knowledge factor, is still only 10% uh, contribution to success. Mm -hmm. And by the way, these three factors, any vocation in life, sports, even religion, academics, whatever, these three factors. Second factor being um, 40% environment. Are you somebody who is conformed to the environment around right. them, or are you somebody that knows how to create environment? Right. Do, you, do you know how to create an environment beyond Sunday morning mm -hmm. in your Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Are you right. the one that determines the heavenly environment when you walk into the school system or wherever you work? That factor, the environment factor, the third factor of success that they said contributes to success, of course, is 50%. Can you believe it? It's character. Character. So here's the interesting thing. If these three factors bring the best out of somebody and makes them the head and not the tail, knowledge and expertise in their field and, and wisdom like the Daniels and Josephs, the environment factor where environment doesn't change them, they determine environment where, wherever they go beyond the four walls of the right. church. Right, right, right. <laughs> character factor, once they're out there, they can survive all hell coming at them. Right. They have their family life put together and they're, they're, they're loving God, they're on their way to heaven. When you have these three factors combined... Mm -hmm. 
think about this. You actually can't cultivate all three on a Sunday morning once a week. Mm, you can't. So how can the church be equipped to go beyond just coming and sitting for two hours? You have to shift into even more than a conference. Right. You have to shift into a training that focuses on leveraging and bringing out those three factors. We give you the knowledge and the expertise that you need to be effective in your field of calling. Mm-hmm. It's a knowledge factor. Right, right. And teach you how to teach yourself. Become right. a self-taught student in your day-to-day life. Then the environment factor. That three-day environment is bringing these changes. Right, right. The grace of God, the high-pressured environment, then the character factor. We deal heavily in character and values in this training. And we're able to cultivate that and show the student how to now go out and implement systems and routines into their day-to-day life to continue to cultivate those three factors of success. Wow. You can't get that on a Sunday morning, and nor should you. Right, right. Can can you imagine putting that pressure on your pastor to help you, to help that entire crowd get the knowledge they need all all in two hours on a Sunday? To do all that work of environment, listen, the church service brings the best out of you. Mm -hmm. You'll see people who are on their way to divorcing their husbands and wives, worshiping together (laughs) in church on a Sunday. Sunday Sunday just makes it look good, I'll tell you. And and there's validity to it. We're not forsaking the Sunday morning experience. We come together for corporate worship taking communion, water baptism, all the good things. But we have made the mistake of believing that a a Sunday service with a stage and a bunch of chairs is going to disciple nations. Yes, yeah. It's unbelievable that we have thought Mm -hmm. that a a two-hour gathering once a week is enough to transform people and society. We've bought into that. And so now, with it being an era of going beyond the four walls of the church, we have to equip them to to be effective beyond the four walls. If the Great Commission was... Now all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go to church and don't sin and get ready for heaven. If that was the great commission, we'd have a perfect score and we wouldn't need training. Mm. But because the great commission is about discipling whole nations, uprooting demonic systems Mm -hmm. and replacing them with righteous systems, changing nations and sectors and spheres to bear the image of heaven on earth. And we are to be the the history makers that are catalysts of this in in environments where there's corruption, where there's violence, where there's passivity, all manner of environments. You better get trained like a spiritual Navy SEAL, Ah, let me tell you. And that's the glory of the emergence of this History Makers training that's changing nations. Hallelujah. Wow. (laughs) That is incredible. I don't know if that answers the question. That answers the questions for sure. You know what it does? It's There's what I've, if I was to encapsulate it all, no matter who you are, whatever walk you come from, it will take you from where you are show your destiny, Mm. open that doorway, Mm. and not only just say, okay, here's your destiny, go figure it out. It's, we're going to give you the steps and systems and how to build out how how do you make that happen? How do you make a reality? Because the greatest miracles don't always take place like that. Don't always take place at the crusade. Right. They do sometimes. But the greatest miracles in the kingdom are often the process of change. The process of transformation. Right. Right. (laughs) Listen, I I just got to turn to the camera. We've got two more minutes here. And I need to encourage everybody that's watching this. This History Makers Experience training is coming up October 28th to 30th. And it's both in person and online. So no matter where you are in the world, if you can handle even a different time zone, which some people do, uh, you can register and be part of it. The online experience is just as powerful as the in-person. Go to historymakersacademy.com. All the information is there. Click on the testimonies area and see that I'm telling the truth. $97 (laughs) only for the next six days and then the price goes up again, register in person 
It'll be in Whitby, Ontario here. It's worth the drive or the flight. We look forward to seeing you uh, at the History Makers Experience. So go to historymakersacademy.com. Philip, thanks for a great interview. I appreciate it. I do. I do. I would be signing up again. <laughs> it was fantastic. Thank you. God bless you. We'll see you next time on History Makers TV.